ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮತಿಪುರಾಣಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ನಮಿ ಗೌಡಪಾದಂಚಂಕರೀಸುರೇಶ್ವರ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಂದ್ರ ತಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಣೇ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಓಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಸುಗಮ ಟ್ಯೂಸ್ಡೇ ಓ ವೆಡ್ನಸ್ಡೇ ಟ್ಯೂಸ್ಡೇ ವೆಡ್ನಸ್ಡೇ ಆ ವೇದಾಂತ ಪರಿಭಾಷಾ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಸುಗಮ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಕನ್ಫರ್ಮ್ ವೆಡ್ನಸ್ಡೇ ಸುಗಮ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಬರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಪೂರ್ವಪಕ್ಷಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಸ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಿ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಶುಡಂಟ್ ಜನರಲಿ ಗೋ ಬೈ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಓಕೆ ದ ದ ದ ದ ವಿಷನ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ why he thinks like that why he makes such an argument you have to go to that then it becomes easy to understand his mistake if it is right it also becomes right anyway it may be right it may be wrong but to find out the right and wrong go to it he says samsara is anadi it is true then the cause cause of samsara also must be anadi by 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 anadi he means uh, by anadi he means it is no doubt produced one again and again it is produced what he means by anadi we mean by anadi you just find it you just to find it and it cannot be taken as an event in time first it is not an event it is not an occurrence in time along with time and place it is just to found you just to find yourself with samsara that means you are experiencing samsara that's all it means anadi anadi according to us it means simply you are experiencing samsara that's all for him anadi means it is produced if it is produced then how can he call it anadi he says it is produced but again and again and again and again it is repeatedly produced and it is something materially produced this is the thing it is a materially produced so some matter is required to produce it so here it may look that oh these are all technical things so what let him say anything it's not just a technical it shows your very understanding of adhyasa understanding of samsara the very nature of samsara so according to the nature its removal also uh, 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 removal also goes with it so as the diagnosis so the solution you see how you, any any disease also if you diagnose it uh, for example see there are there are dis- certain diseases uh, if they are physical diseases you give some physical medicine if the reason is a prana level then you give a medicine according to prana some diseases occur in the body 
which are more due to mental tension rather than the physical, uh, physical reason. If it is due to mental tension, then correct the tension there, the disease goes away automatically. The similarly, some diseases are due to physical reasons, some are due to mental reasons, some our Shastra says are due to Purva Karma reasons. You do not find any reason in this life. This our Shastra says. Physical reason you do not find, body seems to be okay. Mental reason, person also is okay. That means mentally he is not very, very excessively stressed. So, psychologically also he is okay. Yet he has some diseases. Then our, our, I think our doctors have their own way of diagnosing. They just go something. Ultimately, if whatever is not understood, either they call virus or they call allergy. Okay. Anything it cannot be traced. Anything cannot be explained through the reasons accepted by that particular medical system, because there are many Ayurvedic, homeopathic, uh, allopathic. Generally, we say allopathic, but homeopathy also has its own system. Ayurveda also has its own way, its own way of exploring. So, generally, I, allopathic people, when you do not find, when you cannot give a reason, the reasons which are accepted by the allopathic system, see, you cannot say there is no reason, the reasons that are acceptable to allopathic system. If such a reason is not there, they give them either, either, either mainly allergy or due to some, some such explanations they give. But generally, generally they go by symptoms rather than reasons, rather than the causes. Uh, they go by symptoms, remove the symptoms, the problem is solved. Because they mo more often, they look at the symptoms alone directly. It is something like a headache, give a suppression, that is all. Uh, tension is gone, so okay, you are healthy, that is all. So, anyway, that is, that is their way. But here, depending upon the diagnosis, if it is produced one, then go to the root of it. If adhyasa, uh, if samsara is a material and also produced, two things, samsara is material and produced one, these two they, they think. Though they call anadi, their anadi is different, do not get confused. When we say anadi is different and they say anadi is different. They, when they say anadi, it is the same material one, it is same produced, yet since it is repeatedly produced, they call it anadi. See, their concept of anadi is a very highly misleading, do not get confused. Huh? When they say anadi, it is no doubt materially produced, yet it is repeated occurrence, it repeatedly produced. The repeated production is called anadi. For we say, when we say, I mean Shankara followers or are, are Bhasha Prakriya followers, Sachidan Swamiji and, and we, anadi means you just find it. It is neither material nor produced. Two things we say. Neither it is material nor it is produced. They say it is material and repeatedly produced. So, this is their idea of samsara, because they give the, this, why do they give this kind of explanation? See, have you, have you ever watched it? Why? Wonder. You watch, watch, why do they give this kind of explanation to adhyasa or to samsara? They take adhyasa or samsara is something material, something material, that is a defect. So, it depending upon how you understand samsara, you offer a solution to it. If you take that it is a material and it is produced, then you go for really elimination of a material and the production has to be stopped and the material has to be destroyed. If it is materially produced, repeatedly produced, then the, 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 the cause of its repeated production is the matter and the matter repeatedly produces adhyasa, then the matter has to be destroyed. So, this is how they present it. 
So they think of, they think in terms of destroying, destroying, not in terms of falsifying. Falsifying is different from destruction. Though they also call it as a falsification, but still an element of destruction they won't give up. They won't give up, give up. This is the difference. Okay, now let us proceed with the subject. He says, Nanu Sadir Adhyasaha. He says, Adhyasa cannot be the cause of samsara. Here most of the most of these disputes arise because people look at the things differently. When we take adhyasa in one way, they take adhyasa in another way. If both are using word adhyasa, but their concept of adhyasa, how it is produced, is differ, differs. Okay. Their concept of adhyasa is a material production. And our concept of adhyasa is, it is neither material nor it is a production. You just find it, that's all, it is a bhranti. It is just a perception. It's just a perception. So, uh, uh, most of the most of the uh, dispute disputes in Vedantika, I am talking philosophical disputes arise because people look at differently, understand it differently. This is where we need we need to patiently listen to them. They try to understand their standpoint, and even after understanding their standpoint, if you with all sympathy with all patience, still if you find the defect, uh, if it is defective, if it is not true, defective means what? If it is not true to universal experience, then you can find fault with it. Because your understanding is much better. But just taking in your own meaning, they say in one sense, you take it in a different meaning, different sense, and then you keep on disputing and quarreling. I feel this is a necessary quarrel. Okay, so Nanu Sadhir Adhyasaha. Purupaksha still holds on to his view, Adhyasa is Sadhi. Tasya Katham Anadi Samsara Hetutvam. How can such an Adhyasa, which is a material production, be cause of Samsara, which, is, which itself is beginningless, Anadi? Samsara is Anadi, and the cause must be Anadi. That's what he says. Now, the Swamiji's reply is Anabhignyo Bhavanasi, Anabhignyo Bhavanasi Adhyasavrattasya. Oh my God, you have missed, you have misunderstood the very nature of Adhyasa. Now I understand, he says, the uh, Swamiji's reply is, now I understand why you are insisting, why you are arguing like that. You have not understood the very nature of Adhyasa. That means, the way we understand Adhyasa is not understood by you. You take Adhyasa as a material and a production. This is where the mistake lies. That is why you are unable to appreciate our stand. So, Anabhignyo Bhavanasi Adhyasa Vrittasya. You have not understood the nature of Adhyasa. What is that Adhyasa? Now we tell you Adhyaso Nama Bhrantihi. Adhyasa is Bhranti, that is all. You have not understood the very nature of Adhyasa. You, you thought Adhyasa is a production, is a material production, production from a material. It is a production when a material transforms, modifies into Adhyasa. Oh, we say Adhyasa is a Bhranti, a misperception. Adhyasa is a misunderstanding or misperception. When Adhyasa is Bhranti, Tathacha Adhyaso Anartha Heturiti Bruvata, then when we say, First, keep in mind Adhyasa is Bhranti. Okay. Now, the come to the second point. When we say Samsara is due to Adhyasa, we simply say that Samsara Anarthaha is Bhranti Matram, not due to Bhranti. See, this, the, the, every language has to express it is due to Bhranti. It is due to Bhranti. The word due does not don't make it cause and effect relationship. I, I, let us take the worldly illustration. You take rope for snake. Then he says, how? Where is the snake? Why the snake has come? He asks. How does the snake have come? He says, oh, snake, snake is due to your mistake. Now, when we say snake is due to mistake, taking the word due to, 
you start imagining a cause and production. You think mistake is a cause and the cause produces it. Now, the due to only means that there is a mistake in you and under the mistake you happen to see it. That is what it means. You are under the mistake and under the mistake you, you find adhyasa, you find samsara. You find samsara as long as there is a mistake. That is what it means. It does not, we do not posit cause and effect relationship. There is a cause, cause modifies into it. So, the basic problem with that Pura Pakshi is, he is not giving the, the thought of cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. He has been holding on to the very idea of cause and effect and he refuses to see that Adhyasa is a direct misperception, no question of cause. Huh. This is the mistake. Now, they always talk of cause and effect, cause and effect. There is some cause and that cause has produced. Okay, so adhyaso nam adhyaso hi nama brahanti hi. I read out Swamiji's statement and explain. Adhya anabhidnyosi, you have not understood the very nature of adhyasa. Here I am telling you, adhyasa means a brahanti, a misunderstanding. Uh, so, when we say adhya, samsara is due to adhyasa, when we say samsara is due to adhyasa, we only mean that samsara itself is adhyasa. <laughs> See, samsara itself is wrongly thought of upon you, though it, it does not exist in you. Though you are free from samsara, you, you for wrongly think that you are under samsara. This is what it means. Samsara is due to adhyasa or due to bhranti. Due to bhranti, do not make it bhranti is one and samsara is another and cause and effect relationship. Samsara is due to Bhranti means that you are under some misunderstanding, under certain wrong thought and under that thought you feel there is a samsara. Samsara is felt as long as you are under that misunderstanding, that is what it means. Under the misunderstanding you find samsara, when you are free from no samsara, that is all. Because the samsara is only a thinking that it is not that samsara has come there. You think there is a samsara. The very thinking of samsara is samsara. See, thinking of a problem is the problem. It is not that there is something and due to that the problem has come. You are presenting problem is something real. That is a mistake. Problem is not there. In this, see, the problem which is not there, if you think it is there, then tell me what is the nature of problem problem not being there, if you think that there is a problem, then tell me what is the nature of problem. Your very thinking is the problem, that is all. Thinking that it is a problem, itself is the problem. See, the problem is not there and yet you think there is a problem, that means problem really not being there, your very thinking that there is a problem, itself is a problem. This is what we, to, we told in more technical way and this is the simpler way. Shastra says, because the Shastra means they are used to their technical language. So, we just say, so samsara is due to bhranti means what? Samsara is due to adhyasa, it means samsara is due to bhranti. Due to bhranti means that I am subject to samsara itself is wrong. Though it is not there, you are thinking wrongly that you are under samsara. You are thinking wrongly that you are subject to samsara, that samsara is not there, you are only thinking itself is samsara, that is all. So, disprove that thinking, then samsara is not there, that is all. This is as simple as this. Therefore, nacha, see, adhyaso tatha, tatha cha adhyaso anartha hetu riti bruvata. When we say adhyasa is the cause of samsara is due to adhyasa, we only mean that samsara anartho nama bhranti matram. Samsara anartha is not due to something. That there is a samsara anartha, this very thinking is a wrong thinking, is a wrong perception, that is all. Uh, Navastu saditi and samsara is not something really happened to you. You are not really under samsara. You are not really undergoing samsara, 
you think you are undergoing though you are you are free from samsara you are eternally free from samsara before and now and in future nobody can ever be subject to samsara everybody in its real in his real nature every person in one's real nature is eternally free from samsara right now you are free from samsara you are mukta swarupam you are brahma swarupam see so in your real nature you are ever free but it is only you are thinking that i am not free i am bound that itself is a bondage you are thinking that i am bound i am not free th- th- this very thought is obstruction that's all we only disprove the thought is wrong thought is not true to your real nature that's all this thinking is adhyasa this is bhranti we say so you disprove the thinking because your real nature is already free when you are already free and if you think that you are bound what does it mean you are already free and yet you think that you are bound that means your thinking is false when you are already free and you think that you are you, you you are bound that means your thought that i am bound is against the fact a thought against the fact is bhranti fact is one way and your thinking is totally against the fact so understand since it is against it is not true to the fact once it is not true to the fact then the fact is different this what is the thinking which you have which is against the fact not true to the fact this itself proves it is not true that's all then the adhyasa is not there samsara is not there when you say samsara is not true that means it is not there that's what it means disproving means understand in your real nature you are not subject to samsara you may think thinking is only thinking not reality you only think but not really bound you think that you are bound but in reality you are not bound what does it mean it is only thinking not reality understand thinking is only a thinking level not a reality that's all it is disproven disproving means thinking is only in your thought not the reality look at the reality oh reality is totally different thought is wrong that's all once you understand thought is wrong it it doesn't touch the reality once you understand that thinking is wrong that means it is only a thinking not a reality this itself is disproving oh you you, you see the difference subtle difference understanding false as a false understanding uh, that adhyasa or samsara is not there it is not true to the fact in fact it is not there and itself is a thought which is not true a thought which is not true you saw you see a tiger oh you are afraid tiger tiger somebody said it's only a picture that means there is no tiger you say you have not seen the tiger because it is not there it is only a picture oh gone picture means what there is no tiger over similarly you only think but it is not there oh then it's over <laughs> earlier what i thought during the thinking i i get absorbed into thinking i start taking it seriously and you have to be awakened it is only a thought not reality that's all he has to be told you have to be awakened to that fact that what you are thinking is only a thinking not a reality then thinking is understood as a thinking really you are free in reality in reality you are free because the thought is not true to the reality thought doesn't touch the reality thought is only a thought without being there you think of a fire but there is no fire what is so does it burn you you think of fire but without without the fire being there does it burn you it can't because it is not there it is only a thought a thought of fire doesn't burn you okay when you are uttering the word fire does it burn your tongue when you say fire 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 three times three times you do your ta- does your tongue get burnt <laughs> because the word fire is not the fire similarly thought fire is not the fire if the thought fire is the fire thought will immediately burn your mind would have would have done it but it is not doing that shows thought fire is not a fire it's like a film theory film shooting uh uh-huh. in in film studios they only create everything falsely they only create lot of appearances illusions all that they make it, they make many things appear there but nothing really happens most of them don't happen most of them don't happen they only create a, they only create an impression as if it is happening and understand it is only my thought and not true that's all it is gone 
this is called disproving it okay now he says when we say adhyasa is anartha hetu we only mean adhyasa is uh, anartha hetu is falsely imposed without being there you are falsely thinking you are samsari you are not samsari it is only thinking prove how thinking is only a thinking not reality that's all thought is a thought but not reality that's all this is what we have to understand but we we don't think thought is only a, a simply thought we give a reality to thought is an event actual event we actualize the thought we actualize the thought and the actualization has to be debunked and say it is only a thought without being without without it not being there really being there therefore under the impression you think it really happened it's only a thought not really happened neither happened nor is happening now nor will ever happen it is only simply a thought then thought is understood as a thought it is gone gone means it ceases to be real okay this is called falsification say navast sat each shabda is manana maada takkaddu appa each word is worth contemplating how beautiful it is ha ye tatha cha adhyaso anartha hetu riti bruvata तवदेव उत्तम यदुक्तम संसारानर्थो नाम भ्रांति मात्रम बह संसार अनर्थ इज ड्यू टू भ्रांति मीन संसार अनर्थ इज ओनली अ थाट नाट रियली बीयिंग देर इट इस जस्ट अ थाट युर थिंकिंग देर इज संसार वेर इज इट युर थिंकिंग यस ऐम थिंकिंग वेर इज इट ऐ से युर थिंकिंग यस ऐम थिंकिंग वेर इज इट युर थिंकिंग यस ऐम थिंकिंग द you keep on repeating it is not able to understand he said the very thinking apart from thinking it doesn't exist oh my god it just disappears the reality the real existence disappears you come to understand it is only a thought oh my god it's only a thought not really being there this is what is debunking it disproving it debunking it or falsifying it not destruction destruction is a sanskrit word sanskrit means nashah avidyanashah they take the word literally and translate into english and that creates a problem so therefore they have an idea of destruction but here when it is only a thought what can you do do you need to destroy it when snake is only a thought do you need to hit it with rope and kill it do you need to kill it yes yes we have to kill it he says ayyo rama dreamy objects are only dream okay all the dreamy world is only a dream not the world see dream world is a contradiction <laughs> dream world is a contradiction once it is a dream it's no more a world ah when we say dream world and seriously that is samsara you need understand it is a dream not being not a world it's not a world it's only a dream dream means it is only a thought without being not really being there just you are thinking 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 that's all understand it is only a thought and not really there that's all it is disproven okay so therefore you are not coming to waking waking is not something a, a, a rea- reality re- real objective world waking is not an objective world you come into people think that you go to sleep which is another place okay dream is an another place and waking is another place we are coming to this town we think waking is a town jagrat avastha is a city and we are coming to that city oh it is not waking is not the world you come to not this statement i repeat it waking is not a state waking is not the world you are coming to then what you think there is a waking that's all the very thinking is waking state waking is not a world world is only a thought of the world not the world you think there is a world and that is a world the very thought is the world you think there is a waking so during the thinking of waking state during the thought of the state you think the here is a world and i have come to it from elsewhere see this is a misunderstanding like dream you think dream is a state you have come to it of course in dream you don't think like that <laughs> 
you feel that you have been there in the dream alone you have been in the world you are born in the dream world you think is anybody born in the dream world ah this is a good question yes yes yes, yes. now i got it it's it helps you to understand when you are in dream did you ever see did you ever think that you were born in world yes you think you have got a date of birth in dream you tell people oh my date of birth has come today is what november november 25th yeah everybody is born you see and on each day some or other people are born so every day every day uh, uh, constitutes birthday for somebody <laughs> so every day constitutes a birthday for somebody okay because these days birthday is a common day hmm? birthday is a common common celebration therefore when you say in dream did you have did, did you have birthday the whole dream is a thought where is the question of birth and and all that do you die in the dream ah this is an interesting do you die in the dream uh, dying in the dream i think impossible as long as you are watching you are awake you are awake means you, you are you have been watching then you only wake up from dream do you die in the dream or you wake up from dream ah it's a good question do you die in the dream world or you only wake up from the dream world no you won't die you only wake up from the world similarly you won't uh, you are not born in the dream world you only see the dream world you are not born into it you may think i am i was born so and so years ago that i was born is only a part of dream you are dreaming that you are born nobody is born person thinks that i was born you are dreams that he was a born similarly dreams that i am subject to death but there is no death there is no birth you think you were born you think you are subject to death that's all this thinking is dream dreaming dreaming is a thought so the thought you think that you are born but nobody is born okay just as you are not born in dream you are not going to die in the dream you only see you experience a dream and you are free from dream that's all similarly waking you experience during the experience you think that you have come from elsewhere world is there even when i was this is the misunderstanding in paramarthu chintamani this will come more elaborately but anyway since we are speaking in english we have to say here only so d- during dream exp- during waking experience you think that waking is a world and i have come from elsewhere to this to this state oh i was born into this world or i have come from elsewhere and it is there really see how do you know it existed before there is no way of knowing it because waking is waking world is only part of waking state and the waking state is to the waker alone if waking state is experienced by the waker does does the waking state exist before the waker comes to know it before the waker comes to experience the waking state before the waker comes to experience the waking state does the state exist independent of the waker watch this does the waking state exist independent of the waker our waker himself is a part of the waking state a waker is part of the waking state then 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 how do you explain that i i have come into the waking state i have come into the waking world how do you explain that did you exist as a waker before you come into the waking state did you exist as a waker before you come into the waking state no impossible <laughs> did i exist as a wake up before i before before i come into waking state no this come into is wrong but i am just using tentatively i'll explain later coming into itself is wrong okay did i exist before i come into waking state i didn't exist that means or you, you did not exist before that means after coming into waking state you become a waker after coming into state becoming a waker even that is ridiculous how can i come how can i say after i have come i become waker then 
as what person do you come to waking in order to become in order to become the waker at a later stage uh, when you come how do you come as as which person you come as what person you come to waking state if you are going to become waker at some later stage no that means waking is not a state before your wakership before you become waker there is no waking world waking world is not there before the waker nor the waker is there before the waking world then who are they waker and waking world are just synonymous they are one block inseparable from each other okay dreamer and dream world they are not two though you are using two words it is just one experience dreamer and the dream world similarly waker and the waking world both are just one now you tell me now is the waker's thought that i have come from outside into this world the world which existed before me is this thought of him right is this thought of him correct is this thought of him true uh, uh, how, uh, am i am i clear uh, let me repeat it the waker thinks that i came into this waking world so he implies two things there are two assumptions i as a waker existed before the waking state i as a waker existed before i come to waking state and the waking state also existed before i come here these are the two misunderstandings why misunderstanding because they are against your own experience you are ignoring the experience and holding a thought that's why we call it bhranti or adhyasa so waker doesn't come into waking state having existed before the state no he can't waker is with the state waker is a waker only with the state waker is a waker only as long as is a state waker is a waker only due to the state okay only from the standpoint of the state in the absence of the state is no waker like in deep sleep in deep sleep is not in another place okay is not in another place right here uh, you are not looking at yourself through the state when you give up the state you are free from the state it is not that state exists and we generally think that state is one room one town sushupti is another place from this place to another place we are going both of them exist independently we think that is the biggest mistake that that itself is a part of part of brahma part of illusion part of misunderstanding therefore you don't exist before the waking state and enter into the state that's wrong that means you are a part of a waking state you are with the waking state you you don't exist as a waker outside the waking state you are a waker only during the experience of waking state you are a waker during the state of waking nor the waking world or waking state exist independent of the waker it doesn't exist independent of the waker it did not exist before nor it it will exist once you cease to be a waker when you cease to be a waker how in deep sleep in deep sleep you cease to be a waker it is not that you left wakerhood in the waking state and you come to deep sleep people generally think this is wrong did you leave your wakerhood or wakership i don't know whatever you call in english i am not good at english did you leave do you leave your wakership in the waking state and you come to the deep sleep <laughs> when you give up wakership wakership there is no waking world and wakership both do not exist therefore waking is a state to the waker waker is a person experiencing the waking state waker cannot exist without experiencing the waking world without the waking world waker can't exist uh okay without the waker waking world can't exist waking world can't exist without the waker that means they coexist or in other words they are together or in other words they are just one waking and the waking world are just one one inseparable indivisible one they can't be one without the other can't exist abhina bhava then 
when you are not awake, that means when there is no waking state, you are deep sleep. In deep sleep, you are not going to deep sleep. In the deep sleep, there is no wakehood, that is all. Does waker go to deep sleep? Does waker go to sleep? Waker himself is with reference to waking state. How can he go? Go means what? Can waker exist giving up being waker? Ah, can waker exist having given up waking state? If he gives up waking state, how can he exist? Because waker is waker with reference to waking world. When he sees us, when he, when, he, when he gives up the waking state, he gives up the wakerhood also. So, waker cannot exist after giving up wakerhood, wakership. After giving wakership, he cannot exist as a waker. He is no more waker. That means, waker is waker, waker is waking world, waking state and waking state is waker. They are not two, they are just one. Therefore, from the standpoint of deep sleep, waking world does not exist at all. Because waking world, like if it exists, it, if, it if it is found, it is found to the waker. But in deep sleep, there is no waker. That means there is no state. Neither waker nor the state, because they go together. And together they do not exist. So, to you, you, you survive. You survive after dropping away, dropping off your wakership. You drop off your wakership, but you continue to exist as consciousness, as pure existence. Pure existence independently exists without being, independently means what? Pure existence exists without being a waker. This is what it means. Independently means without being waker, you are the pure existence, you are the pure consciousness without being a, without having a self-image about yourself, I am so and so. Neither a self-opinion nor a self-image, neither you have self-image nor you have a self-notion, I-notion. Without a no, I-notion, you exist. Without a notion of I, you exist, you survive. The notion of I gets erased, notion of I gets erased, but you exist. That means, your existence is free from I-notion. Your existence is free from I notion, but I notion is only an imagined in the pure existence. So, similarly, here wakership is with the waking world. Waking world and wakership are together one block. This one does not exist for your deep sleep nature. Deep sleep is your natural state. You are not, it is not an assumed state, your natural state. Therefore, Coming to waking means you are assuming wakerhood because the waking does not exist before you come to it. Before you come to waking state, waking does not exist. That means you are coming means waking. Waking means coming. That means it is like another dream. Does the dream exist before you start dreaming? Before you become a dreamer? Before you become a dreamer, dream does not exist. But dreamer exists only in the dream. See, dreamer himself does not exist before he starts dreaming. Be in fact, dreaming is not a beginning, but just for sake of argument, let us say, before he starts beginning, is he a dreamer? Oh, no. Only in the dreaming world he is a dreamer. Otherwise, just he sees us to, when, in deep sleep, there is, no, there is neither dream nor the dream world. I mean, there is neither dream nor the dreamer. Similarly, waking and the waker, both do not exist in the pure consciousness. Exist means they do not exist as they are. As the waker, they do not exist. By losing wakerhood, he becomes one with consciousness, one with pure existence. Losing his wakership, he becomes one with the pure existence, one with the pure consciousness. That means the wakerhood is only another name, another image about the pure existence, which is deep sleep. The same deep sleep is taken, is wrongly taken. The wrong perception is waking. Waking is not in another state apart from the deep sleep. It is not in another state, another place. You are leaving, you do not think that you are leaving deep sleep and coming to waking state. There is no leaving and coming because there is no distance between waking and deep sleep. There is no time gap. There is no space gap. 
there is no objective gap okay in the gap there is no time there is no place there is no object then the entire dream is yourself the whole waking state is atma as as you find it in deep sleep as you find yourself in deep sleep in deep sleep you exist not as an individual did you have any thought about you that i am so and so no you don't have any thought because thought about you is is not your real nature in your real nature you don't need to think think means you don't need to have an image about yourself an opinion about yourself a notion about yourself that means you exist independent of a notion about yourself atma exist independent of a notion of me the notion of me with reference to notion of me there is a world and with reference to yourself without a notion neither notion nor nor the world because the whole world is a notion i is a notion the world is a notion this notion exists for the notion alone from the level of notion alone but to your real self there is no i notion i notion doesn't exist for you in your deep sleep as you now is deep sleep a state state means is it a bound by time is it a, is it existing in particular place or particular time or particular object no therefore there is no gap between dream and me there is no gap between waking state and me because from the standpoint of me the sushupti me waking is included in me the waker and the waking state is already included in the deep sleep because in deep sleep from the standpoint of deep sleep there is no waking because the so called waking is only inseparable from the deep sleep so the deep sleep atma which is the pure atma uh, without any i notion without any identity without any identity without any i notion i exist this is what people have to discover you have to discover yourself without an identity you have to discover yourself without an image without a notion about yourself you just see you exist but no notion about you no thought about you but existence how why what now these are these are all again notions how do i exist how means where what in what form that means a form a, an area a form an identity identity means something this much this much there is no this much or that much there is no thought about you there is no image about you it's an existence independent of image because all images are swallowed into imageless yourself imageless existence identity less existence pure existence which is deep sleep so the waking is not a, a state waking is not a location waking is not a place waking is only a thought about thoughtless sushupti sushupti which is free from thought there is a thought about so the very thought thought of waking state thinks that i have come from deep sleep i have come away from deep sleep that i have come away from deep sleep doesn't mean you have come away because there is no away for away you require a space and time okay to come away from deep sleep you require space and time but space and time is within the waking state it's not outside okay so therefore from deep sleep you don't come away the thought that i have come away itself is a misunderstanding because you are never away from deep sleep because that you only think you are away you are never away that's important you th- you think you are away the thought of away is also within deep sleep therefore you never move away from deep sleep it is an imposed thought it is an adhyasa it is a wrong thought therefore you don't go away from deep sleep you continue to be the same deep sleep and uh, the same pure existence without name and form and image name form means without image without thought without thought without image without identity you exist okay in that there is a thought so the thought is only imposed so the thought thinks that i am away from deep sleep that even away is only a thought not a real distance there is only a thought of distance without distance being there okay you sit here and close your eyes you think you have gone to delhi so in your thought you are in delhi but you are here alone <laughs> see you are here alone 
you are in holy narsipura you only think you have gone to delhi that means the thought doesn't take you to delhi because there is no delhi other than your thought similarly the thought is not a real state thought doesn't mean there is a real state therefore there is no real moving away from deep sleep so it is only a thought is samsara samsara is only a thought not the reality therefore don't think samsara is a world world is something really existing i have come to it you don't th- it is wrong to think that from the sushupti has moved away from sushupti away where can you go away there is no such thing called away all that away is only a thought thought is only imagined falsely wrong perception about the deep sleep therefore the even that wrong thought is inseparable from deep sleep but during the thought you think you have gone away so therefore samsara is due to only a thought not reality i think this one sentence explains everything each sentence in fact in in swami ji's writing sar shankara's writing each sentence is a complete vedanta you just to take one sentence and contemplate you get the entire vedanta whole world is just one with the truth okay संसारानर्थो नाम भ्रांति मात्र न वस्तु सद न च भ्रांति कचिदी युक्ति सहा दृष्ट वी हव नेवर सीन ए भ्रांति एज ए समथिंग इज ए सीक्वेन्स टू समथिंग इज ए लॉजिकल अकरेन्स नो बडी हेज सीन भ्रांति इज ए लॉजिकल अकरेन्स इज एन एक्चुअल प्रॉडक्ट भ्रांति इज नॉट ए प्रॉडक्ट इज नॉट एन एक्चुअल अकरेन्स इट इज नॉट फॉलोइंग ए लॉ ऑफ काज एंड एफेक्ट बिकॉज द वेरी काज एंड एफेक्ट इट सेल्फ इज ए थॉट it's not an actual occurrence that i have come from wake de- deep sleep itself is a thought no i have not come really therefore it is not a real occurrence waking this waking state is not a real happening is not an occurrence which has moved away from deep sleep because there is no occurrence it's not an event it's only a thought you think you have come out you have not come out because there is no coming there is no actual event there is no actual event there is only thought of an event there is no actual event okay waking is not a state there is only a thought therefore you understand thought is a thought there is no state that means you are already brahman therefore samsara is due to bhranti ha huh? how beautiful it is samsara is due to bhranti yukti saha drishta oh uh, i think we will stop with this today <coughs> this idea of adhyas idea of bhranti we have to understand thoroughly and then once you understand it's free understanding is not for the book you understand if you understand it it doesn't mean that you you will be able to understand the book better the purpose is not to understand the book purpose is to understand yourself if you understand yourself all the book is you uh, the book book becomes understood when you understand yourself in understanding yourself the understanding of the book is understanding of swami ji without understanding yourself you try to understand the book you try to understand swami ji you try to understand shankaracharya all this is waste that itself is a bhranti <laughs> you think there is a book other than you huh? see understanding of a book is something different from understanding of you this itself is a bhranti because there is no book doesn't have any knowledge what what knowledge book can give you other than knowledge of yourself it is your knowledge that is the knowledge of the book it is the knowledge of yourself that that is that is found in the book book does book doesn't give you an another knowledge which which is other than knowledge of yourself book doesn't give you a knowledge which is other than the knowledge of yourself other than understanding yourself understanding yourself is what the book is offering book is pointing out therefore when you understand yourself book is understood people think we read the book we studied the book but you have not understood if you don't understand yourself throw away the book all your knowledge is nothing but trash it is not knowledge it is only continuation in your ignorance and calling it by another name knowledge it is only continuing in in in, in your ignorance alone it is only the thought of ignorance imagining that you are imagining that you are enlightened it's like you are in dream and you think that you have wake up in the dream you think you have you 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 have woken up that means you are continuing in dream you are continuing in dream 
Similarly, this is also you think that you have understood the book, therefore, understanding Shankaracharya, understanding Swamiji only means understanding yourself. When you are understanding yourself, all Shankaracharya, all books, all Bhasha, all Swamiji, everybody is yourself. Yourself means that deep sleep, the self without a self image, without an individuality, the pure existence, the consciousness, it is everything. It is everything. Therefore, it is only a thought that I am not Brahman, that alone is a samsara. There is no samsara other than you are thinking that you are a samsari. Other than thinking of samsara, there is no samsara. This is what is trying to say. Purupakshi presents a samsara is something which is produced and it requires a cause and a material produces. Now you are making it something a real substance. This is the biggest problem. Okay. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Om Tat Sat.